The next big section that we're going to be looking at is deemed supplies in terms of section 8. Now, a deemed supply, anything, whenever you see or hear deemed in the act, it means treat it as if. So, deemed supply means treat it as if there was a supply. Now, I'm going to just remind you so you understand what the point is behind this. Can you remember section 7.1a? This is the section that tells us when you must raise output tax. And can you remember, section 7 on A says, when there's a supply, goods, services, by vendor, in the furtherance of an enterprise. So, all of those requirements must be there. What you'll see, what a deemed supply does, so you need to be able to go and tick everything off like this, right? What a deemed supply does, when they say it's a deemed supply, it means immediately you can treat it as if you know for a fact that there has been a supply. So as long as the other parts of it has been met, there will be output vatra erased. So you'll see that they say, for example, a, um, in their psych exam pronouncers, they tell you exactly what you need to ignore. The most common and important ones are some of these you're going to see here. So, for example, the first one you'll be looking at is an indemnity payment. So when you receive insurance, so my building burns down and the insurance pays out money for me. I must then raise VAT on that. That's what Section 8.8 tells us, you'll see. Now, if you think about it, my building burned down and I got money from the insurance company. Was there goods? Yes, the building. Am I a vendor? Yes. Is the building part of my enterprise? Yes. But did I supply it? Did I rent it out? Or supply it or sell it to someone? No. But then you'll say, so you'll see section 8 says, it is considered a deemed supply. So it basically means, even though there's no real supply, we can treat it as if it is. So then all the requirements are met, and there will be output tax. So that's what a deemed supply does. So the first one we'll talk about is indemnity awards. So again, this section will apply if I receive an indemnity payment. That means if the insurance company pays me an amount, there will be output tax. They treat it as if you have supplied services, right? And this will apply if two situations. I receive an indemnity payment, so my computer explodes and the insurance company pays me for it, right? That situation. Or an indemnity payment was made to another person to indemnify the vendor. So my truck driver drives through the wall of, a, of the business next door. And my insurance company has to pay for the wall to be replaced. I will still be charged uh, output tax on that. I'll still have to pay output tax to SARS. Okay, so again the two situations where my computer or my asset explodes and the insurance company pays me. Second one is where something goes wrong and I have to pay someone else. So my truck driver drives through the building of some of my uh, neighbor and I have to pay, my insurance company has to pay out. Right, those two situations. The timing, there's no special value rule, but the timing says the day when it is paid, uh, when you receive the payment. Then, just an important note here, guys. Please note, insurance like life insurance, dreaded disease insurance, all of those things are long-term insurances and they are considered financial services which are exempt. So when we're looking at insurance here, we're looking at short-term insurance. So here's Section 8.8 from the Act, and it tells us everything that we need to do. It says, for the purposes of this Act, except Section 16.3, where a vendor receives an indemnity payment under a contract of insurance, Okay, so I'm just going to quickly take you back. Remember I said there's two situations. The first one is when we receive the payment, right? That's what we just saw. Or we then pay another person. Under a contract of insurance. Or is indemnified under a contract of insurance by the payment of an amount of money to another person. So there's the two situations. That payment or indemnification, as the case may be, shall, to the extent that it relates to a loss incurred in the course of carrying on an enterprise, okay, so to the extent that it relates to a loss incurred in the course of carrying on an enterprise, I'm going to make a comment here for now. I'll explain in a second. This means you 
must apportion. Right, I'll explain it in a second. So for now, I'm going to just clean everything out there and just go. I just want you to focus on the file. So for the purpose of this act, where a vendor receives an indemnity payment or is indemnified under contract insurance by the payment of an amount of money to another person, that payment or indemnification, as the case may be, shall, to the extent that it relates to a loss incurred in the carrying of an enterprise, be deemed to be consideration received for a supply of services. Right, so you can see, it's consideration for a supply of services. That is why we must raise output tax. Performed on the day of the receipt of that payment. Right, so day of receipt, this is the timing rule. Or on the date of payment to such other person as the case may be by that vendor in the course of the furtherance of his enterprise. So just up to there, it tells you if you receive money or you pay your insurance pay someone else, you are treated as if you supplied someone of services. If you have supplied someone of services, guys, if there's a supply of goods or services by a vendor in the furtherance of an enterprise, then you must raise output tax. So that is why you will have to raise output tax. Right? Then, provided, so I always just make this little half bracket around provided, provided that this safe action shall not apply. So in other words, there's no output tax. In respect of any indemnity payment received or indemnification under the contract of insurance, where the supply of services contemplated by that contract is not a supply of subject to tax under section 71A. So, for example, they say if it's not subject to tax under 71A, what section is section 71A? It's again this section, section 71A, when you must raise output tax. So, they say if there's no output tax in terms of that section. So, for example, if it's an exempt supply. So, I have a residential accommodation and that burns down and insurance pays me out. It's exempt. So, there's no output tax here. Provided further, so the next proviso, that this subsection shall not apply in respect of an indemnity payment received by a vendor under a contract of insurance to the extent that such payment relates to the total reinstatement of goods. So they're saying, so I have a computer. Right, there's my little laptop. Amazing artwork by Rulon. This laptop is destroyed. And I go to the insurance. And insurance gives me a new laptop. So they don't pay me out. They say, here's an actual new laptop. If that happens, where they give me a new goods, a total reinstatement of goods, then there is no output tax. Right? And then they say, there's also nothing if input tax would have been denied. So, i.e., Motor cars plus entertainment. Remember input tax denied? So if those things are insured and you receive insurance from it, you do not have to pay output tax either. So I have a motor car, input tax is denied. Now the motor car is stolen and the insurance company pays me out. I don't have to calculate output tax on that because input tax was denied. Now, that's it, guys. That's If you understand that, you understand the majority of the section. Now, I said here, here where it says, to the extent it relates to a loss in the carrying of an enterprise, I said you must apportion. You will remember that output tax is always calculated at 100%, except for indemnity awards, this is what we're looking at now. Fringe benefits and change in use. So, what does that mean? Let's say I buy a PC, a computer, for... Fifty-seven and a half thousand, including VAT. You're an eighty percent vendor. Right. What is the input tax that you would claim? Input tax is 
57,500 times 15,115. I'm an 80% vendor. So assume this is for the entire business, so I can only claim 80% of that, 6,000. Now, computer is stolen, insurance pays, uh, let's say 50,000 rands out. I will then calculate output tax in terms of section 8.8 on that. And that will be 50,000. You always take the amount that you receive from insurance as if it includes that. So times 15 over 115. And usually, guys, that will be calculated 100% here. But now we will say times 80% because section 8.8 tells us to the extent that it relates to a loss incurred in the course of carrying on an enterprise. Now, if I... I'm an 80% vendor, 20% is exempt, it means only 80% is an enterprise, so that's why we have to do that. Okay, so guys, you should have seen that this is a difference. Usually, remember, if we bought this computer and we claim 80%, but then we sold for 50,000, this is just an example. If we sold it for 50,000, our output tax would be 50,000 times 15 over 115 times 100%. Because output tax is always at 100%, except for indemnity, fringe point efforts, and change in use. You would then claim input tax, additional input tax, under section 163H on the lower of cost, 57.5, or market value, if that was the 50,000. So you would say 50,000 times 15 over 115 Times, we only claimed 80% originally, so times 20%. Guys, this is section 163H, which you've already studied, and you should know that. If this is new to you, or surprise, you must go back to that section. Right, so this is just a nice little visual summary of everything we've studied here.